Okay, um, let me welcome our next two speakers, Jonathan Kang and Ching Kai Chu, who are going to speak about the robustness of GNOME using automatic testing. Please give them a warm welcome. So, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, hello. Welcome to this talk. And I'm Jonathan Kong, and I work for SUSE uh, uh, as a software engineer in the three desktop team. And here is my uh, colleague, Ching Kai. Uh, hi, my name is Ching Kai. Uh, I'm a QA engineer from SUSE desktop team. Uh, in SUSE, I have been working on GNOME testing and uh, OpenQA for about two years. Okay. So first of all, I would like to show you the table contents of this talk. And the first part is going to be like why we do this project. The, the, main, the main project is we want to test the latest GNOME applications using OpenQA and GHB. Um, so the first part is going to be why we do this, so this is why we started the, the idea. And the next, I, I would like to briefly talk about several technologies that GNOME uses currently to keep the quality of GNOME high. And so in the third and fourth part, uh, my colleague Shinka will introduce a, uh, give a brief introduction of what OpenQA is. And in the fourth part, it's going to be introduce the way of how we test GNOME applications using OpenQA and the GHB combination. So in the last part will be a conclusion. So why we do this? Well, um, for me, I, I maintain the GNOME, uh, it, uh, it is a big story behind the scene. So for me, I, I am a uh, maintainer of logs for, for a while. So I think many of you, if, uh, if you are a maintainer of projects, you know maintaining a project in GNOME is, is a little bit challenging, I would say, especially for, for me, who is relatively new to the community. So sometimes I, I, made, I made mistakes. So especially while fixing bugs, I made mistakes. Um, like um, a few months ago, a bug report was filed against the logs saying that there was something wrong with the uh, boot selection menu. Well, if you're not uh, familiar with logs, the boot selection menu is a popover that allows users to uh, choose which boot to view logs from. So it is a bug. So I spent some time working on it, and then I fixed it. So I pushed the patch to master branch, and well, problem resolved. So, but and unfortunately, like uh, a few weeks later, another bug report was filed against logs, saying that users can't open logs. So every time they open logs, uh, a segment segment force happened. So. Um, I also spent some time on it. Uh, I, I do discuss with the uh, reporter about it because I can't really reproduce the pro problem. So after some time of investigation, that, and I found the problem is introduced by my previous patch. <laughs> so, and then um, the thing is, like, the reporter doesn't have sufficient permission to view system logs, which I do. So everything works for me. The patch works for me. The previous patch works for me. So basically, I wrote bugs in that patch. So and this story reminds me of a question uh, I saw I ever saw in uh, in Zhihu, which is a Q&A platform, which is very like Quora if you're familiar with Quora. So the question is, uh, is there any way to enrage a developer, or let's say? Make a developer angry. <laughs> um, so, and the answer with most upvotes says when you see a developer coding, you go to him or her and you say, oh, you're writing bugs. <laughs> so, I know, and I, I would say the answer is I will definitely give that answer an upvote without any hesitation because I, I have ever done the exact, exactly the same thing. So, and I think it's rather annoying to me. So I began to find or figure out if there are any kind of solutions where I can avoid this kind of 
problem. Well, luckily, um, I work in a team where we have both software engineers and uh, QA engineers together. And also, uh, for three and open source products, we use uh, open QA to test uh, GNOME, applications, GNOME applications. So I got a chance to talk to my colleague, Chen Kai, about, uh, about, about my problem. I told him uh, what I've met, so the problem. And after some time of discussion and investigation, and we figured out that this way of testing the latest GNOME applications using OpenQA and GHB. Okay, so before going into um, the method we used for testing GNOME applications, I would like to briefly introduce the technologies of GNOME that GNOME uses right now for testing applications. So I'll mention three things. The first one's unit test, and then dog tail, and then GNOME continuous. So first one, unit test. Well, I would, many of you uh, should be familiar with unit test. So unit test is something really, oh, okay. By using unit test, you can find the problems uh, earlier. So unit test will be run during the build time. So you can, for developers, you can find problems, you can find issues early in the uh, development cycle, so you can fix them earlier. Well, to improve the quality of the uh, applications, or that's the library, or so you have you have to increase the uh, test case coverage, which means you you get more codes to test it to ensure the quality. So next is the dog tail. Well, dog tail is a um, GUI test tool and is a um, automation framework, and it is written in Python. And besides the fact that uh, the framework is written in Python, and it also has the dogtail scripts, which is also written in Python. So you can write some Python scripts to control how you test the program, the application. And well, the main idea of dogtail is it uses uh, accessibility technologies to communicate with the desktop applications. So let's say if you want to click on the button, and then you want to enter some text message in the uh, text entry. So we use the uh, so-called A11Y technology to, to achieve this kind of thing. Well, one problem I found while using Dogtail is it's not working on the VLAN. So since, uh, since Fedora 25, I think, so VLAN has been the default session for users to, to log in GNOME. The, so every time I run some uh, VLAN, oh no, every time I run some dogtail test, I have to log out and then re-log in using the X session, which is quite complicated. So, and next we have uh, GNOME continuous projects, which uh, there was a talk about it uh, yesterday morning. So I wouldn't uh, talk too much about just a brief introduction of what I prepared. So. It is a functional research project and that now currently maintained by some of the volunteers. And it, it is a continuous integration project here, so it builds and tests it uh, continuously. And the main idea of the GNOME continuous it is it monitors like, I think it's more than 200 Git repositories, and mainly, uh, many, most of them are GNOME applications and it also has network manager and then system D, et cetera. So if there is uh, a commit uh, that is, goes up in the, any of the re repository, so uh, GNOME Continuous will build, build that project and uh, generate a, uh, uh, it will produce a downloadable result, which is a Q call to image. So you can use the image to, let's like, say, put it in Vert Manager or GNOME Boxes so you can boot it up to the latest GNOME uh, desktop, which is probably a few minutes or a few hours just from the master branch, which is relatively very new. Um, but one problem I found with this one is, uh, if you go to the website of build.gnome.org, you, you go, you click on the download button, you can see there is a uh, image, this QCore2 image, and that 
uh, that image was like generated in the third of March. So it haven't built successfully for like four or five months, so which is a problem, kind of. Oh, well, one thing I think a good one is a, it has the inter integration with the IRC clients uh, in GNOME Hackers uh, channel. So every time the build finishes, whether succeed or not, so it will give a message says, uh, let for, for example, this one, uh, the build failed and the failed is, uh, the, co the broken components is evidence and they give you a link direct to you so you can find some uh, build logs there, which is very helpful. Um, so ha having all these kind of uh, the techniques we, uh, we, we currently have in GNOME community to ensure the quality of GNOME, so, uh, but sometimes I do have problems with this. So, uh, with I uh, discussed with uh, my colleague Jin Kai about the problem. So, uh, the next part is going to be Jin Kai presenting uh, the way of how we test normal applications using OpenQA. So, Today, I will first uh, give a very sh brief introduction to OpenQA and uh, our uh, experience using OpenQA testing uh, GNOME on SUSE Linux, Linux Enterprise Desktop. Uh, then I will share you our recent uh, experiments of continuously testing uh, an upstream project uh, with OpenQA. Uh, as Jonathan just uh, talked, uh, while he puts lots of time making new features and fixes uh, for GNOME logs. The idea always disturbs him about uh, the possibilities of writing new bugs uh, while doing all these works. So he wants to have his new commits better tested in time uh, before they get into the next release. So she did some research. There is currently several testing tools used in GNOME development. Uh, but uh, an universal automated functional uh, testing tool is the missing piece. And uh, that happens to be uh, the job OpenQA is doing pretty well. Uh, we can build GNOME projects using JGBuild or Flatpacked. Uh, and all these can be integrated into OpenQA. Uh, in our case, JGBuild is used because GNOME logs uh, haven't migrated to Flatpak yet. Uh, so now, uh, let's start with a short video uh, generated by OpenQA. Uh, okay. Uh, in this uh, video, we can see the system is uh, building uh, is building GNOME logs, and uh, we can escape uh, the tedious process. Yeah, just build. And after, uh, and after. Uh, the JH build was built uh, successfully. Uh, we can uh, run uh, launch GNOME logs uh, via JH build. And now uh, OpenQA is doing some smoke test for GNOME logs. This video records the whole process of building GNOME logs using JH build and uh, uh, some smoke testing after the build. Uh, the whole process in this video is automated uh, by OpenQA without any human interference. Uh, 
many of you may not know about uh, OpenQA. Uh, it is a fully it is a fully automated open source uh, testing framework, uh, which was first developed by OpenSUSE project and now also used uh, by SUSE for SUSE products and even uh, used by Fedora for their release validation testing process. OpenQA is, uh, and uh, this is the OpenQA instance for OpenSUSE, uh, OpenQA instance for OpenSUSE, and uh, this is the OpenQA instance for Fe Fedora project. Okay. Uh, OpenQA is a free software released under uh, the GPL v2 license. It is implemented in Perl and uh, uses Qmu uh, by default. Of course, it can use other backend uh, for starting and uh, controlling the virtual machine and uh, OpenCV for fuzzy uh, image matching. That means that it should be installable in any system with a Perl stack. It's not just uh, some automated scripts which do this and uh, that and uh, then check the output of various commands uh, to see if bugs or problems exist. It uses virtual machine and uh, closely monitors their uh, state uh, and run tests on them. OpenQA can check the output from both theory console and the screen in every step and uh, send the necessary uh, keystrokes and the commands to proceed to the next. OpenQA is capable of installation testing, console testing, and uh, graphical application testing. Uh, let's see some examples. Uh, this is a uh, graphical testing. Uh, in this example, uh, we started LibreOffice and uh, uh, OpenCV will read the actual screen output and uh, compare it to the predefined uh, needles uh, to check if uh, LibreOffice are launched uh, uh, successfully. Uh, a needle consists of a full screenshot in PNG format and a JSON file with the same name uh, containing the associated data uh, like which areas inside the screenshot are relevant and the uh, list of tags. Tags are used to decide which needle should be used uh, at any moment. Uh, we can see uh, this needle's tag name uh, welcome to LibreOffice and uh, uh, the, the JSON file defined uh, which areas OpenCV will check. And of course, OpenQA can also uh, test some console testing. Uh, let's see another example. Uh, in this example, uh, we ran a distribute a sanity check uh, uh, in the terminal. And the OpenQA uh, will check uh, the output from the console area to see if the commands were executed successfully. Uh, and uh, the complete testing process is recorded, and all the logs and uh, all the log files are uploaded auto uh, automatically. And you can see, uh, once uh, the testing is finished, and all the logs uh, will be uploaded by OpenQA. Uh, okay, let's back to our slide. Uh, SUSE is adopting OpenQA as an integral tool for three product, uh, product testing alongside existing <coughs> manual, test, uh, manual testing. It allows a very quick overview of the current development uh, stat status and uh, at the same time enables border testing coverage. Uh, currently, there are uh, 89 uh, cases have been automated by OpenQA in SUSE desktop team, uh, including those uh, components. Uh, and we also implemented uh, the remote uh, desktop testing using OpenQA's uh, multi-machine testing feature. 
uh, if I remember correctly, uh, more than 25% uh, of bugs were spotted by OpenQA during our desktop beta phase. Uh, there are many people thought that uh, OpenQA is a framework only for operating system level uh, automated testing. After the brief introduction, let's back to our demo and to see how can uh, GNOME upstream developers test uh, their project uh, using OpenQA and uh, Gitch Build. Uh, we have already know that OpenQA will create, create a visual machine. Uh, perform certain steps and uh, return an overall result. Uh, every one of those executions is called a job in OpenQA. Uh, there are three jobs in our demo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are three jobs in our demo. Uh, the first one was implemented by uh, Fedora's community, and I just renamed the test. Uh, Fedora 25 uh, was installed, and uh, uh, the visual machine image was uh, saved after the installation. Uh, we can see this test. Uh, it's, a uh, it's a typical OpenQA ins uh, installation uh, case. Uh, uh, the, the Fedora 25 was installed and uh, the uh, QCore 2 image will be saved after the installation. And uh, this is the video generated by OpenQA. Okay. And uh, in the, uh, in the uh, second uh, job, OpenQA booted to the QCore 2 image uh, install the dependencies required by Gitch Build, and uh, uh, we also save the image as the base system uh, with Gitch Build installed uh, successfully. Yeah. Uh, I defined uh, the, uh, the, uh, the steps we should ch uh, set up Gitch Build, and uh, you can see the video. Uh, uh, we should first update uh, the Fedora 21st uh, to resolve some dependency problems. Uh, then uh, install Gitch Build uh, in the Fedora 25. Ah, it's very long, and this takes uh, and this case takes about uh, uh, one hours. Uh, but don't worry, uh, the the first two jobs only should be run just uh, one time. We can, re uh, we can use the base image which was generated uh, uh, by this job uh, to build uh, uh, other GNOME applications. So in the third job, uh, in the last job, the base system was launched and uh, we can build uh, GNOME applications by calling uh, a subroutine uh, which was defined in a custom module uh, and uh, the build logs will be uploaded so that you can analyze, uh, analyze the log once the build is uh, filled. Uh, and uh, this video was the first video we have, uh, we have saw and uh, all the uh, build logs were saved, Gitch, uh, Gitch build build logs were saved and uh, upload. So uh, if you want uh, to uh, using OpenQA and Gitch Build test your project, you just need to uh, write two cases. Uh, one is to use the uh, custom module I wrote uh, and uh, you can use the subroutine uh, to build the app. Uh, you can define the, uh, the app names uh, then uh, your application will be built by this case uh, and uh, you have to uh, write some smoke test to 
uh, check if your uh, application uh, have some regression uh, problems. And uh, let's, uh, let me uh, describe uh, a little about uh, this smoke test. Uh, basically, we will uh, launch GNOME logs after uh, uh, the build and uh, check the about page and uh, click uh, uh, the button on the right side uh, respectively. Uh, and then we will grant uh, a user uh, permission with uh, a higher permission to see the system log, then reboot the system and uh, uh, do the uh, do the uh, uh, do the smoke test again. Uh, so uh, once Jonathan has pushed a new commit to GNOME logs, uh, we can just uh, uh, trigger this this job, and it only takes about uh, uh, 20 minutes to build GNOME logs and uh, do GNOME logs uh, smoke test uh, to see if his uh, if his new commit introduced uh, some uh, new problem to his project. Uh, okay, uh, that's all about our demo. Let's give time back to Jonathan. So, conclusion time. Well, they like for me, the biggest uh, lesson I learned is to avoid writing bugs. Because <laughs> you really have to, but sometimes we just couldn't really avoid. So you, you, you have to have some test the methods to test the applications to find the, what the problem is. And well, besides this uh, solution, which is we automated, uh, we automated the test using OpenQA. And we use JHB, some of you might ask, why do you use JHB? Because JHB kind of kind of sucks, I would say. But <laughs> really, because you have so lots of dependencies, some and sometimes it just couldn't build successfully out of no reason. And 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 besides besides this method, we have, we have also uh, figured out some other others like using Flatpak uh, Plus Builder, which is suggested right now in the newcomer page. So, but the problem is, um, I think no many GNOME applications have uh, have the flat pack support. And also another problem is, if you want to test the latest master branch, the, the code from master branch, so you need a uh, GNOME nightly, which ha I think uh, currently less applications have the like flat pack support in the nightly uh, in the nightly wrapper. So this is what we have. So. Uh, for logs, logs don't have Flatpak support, so we uh, we, did, we didn't choose this uh, solution. And okay, so and uh, another thing we thought about is uh, automating GHB setup is, is relatively uh, quite a challenge, I would say. So during the whole setup, we 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 met a a problem with which is due to uh, Glib, uh, I think it's probably a, a bug in Glib, and it somehow it says a, it, it just can't find a enum, so it, uh, it leads to the GCAP builds uh, failed. So after some quite some time of like investigating, I, I realized what the problem is, and kind of solved it. And so uh, during the whole process of like using um, OpenQA and the, the thing we choose Fedora is uh, like in Fedora you can very kind of relatively easily to set up JHB and build some ap applications. But we, what we found out is um, like some of the OpenQL API in Fedora is, uh, is missing because it's relatively not that uh, easy for you to use it. Some, it, some kind of, uh, for something, let's say if you want to um, Update some system or uh, do some other uh, administrative commands. Uh, the the whole API is not very mature uh, compared with the uh, open source one. So, and another one is like for for the future, I would say we might do some some 
we might or might not, so, it, but it's something to consider with is a continuous integration. Let's say it's, it's something like the GNOME continuous, so if a commit goes up, and it will trigger the, uh, the whole test the process automatically. And yeah, th this is an a, a idea like the, um, uh, borrowed from the GNOME continuous project. And besides this, we've, we've also uh, thought about is testing, uh, testing the application is using the image generated by GNOME continuous project. But unfortunately, like the last successful build for GNOME continuous project was have to date back to the 3rd of March, which is four or five months ago. So we have also forgot about that. So, so if you want to know more about uh, like OpenQA, there are some uh, links you can uh, find more information about it. So I think that's pretty much about our talk. Any questions? Yes. Hey, um, it was not clear uh, to me if you can, um, of course, run the tests, the, the, UI, the UI tests, and then you get the results and you have to interpret them, or whether you can also compare, uh, for example, if you're, ex if you're expected to click on something and then something shows up, um, is there like any kind of image comparison that you could provide to it so it would tell you this failed because um, not because of the result of this script but because I clicked here and uh, the number of expected results or the expected results did not meet uh, the image that we gave to it. Okay. Uh, probably we should back to uh, the LibreOffice example. Uh, we can you, you can define uh, when you click the button uh, after you click the button uh, you can write in your case uh, uh, to assert some uh, windows uh, if they are popped up uh, correctly uh, and uh, you can uh, and uh, probably, uh, and uh, most of the needles are created before uh, in a pro uh, in a development uh, uh, environment, uh, and uh, the needles are all the expected uh, results. Uh, if uh, the pop-up window are not matched with the expected needles, uh, OpenQ will uh, uh, field the result will be filled. You can know uh, the. It's not the right window uh, popped up. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Have you thought about testing r actual hardware rather than uh, virtual machines? Testing actual devices like a laptop or uh, an embedded device, or real hardware. Uh, yeah, yeah. OpenQA has the feature. Uh, uh, OpenQA supports IPMI, IPMI. You can use IPMI to control a uh, real hardware. And uh, uh, in SUSE, we also test uh, uh, some uh, like visual. Uh, uh, visualization testing using OpenQA and uh, API features. Uh, I may have missed it as you were just explaining. Like you show that you back up the logs and things. If uh, a UI action that I have generates a, a file on the file system, like I saw you, you back up the file system itself. Am I able to specify uh, specific files to be stored so I can check them after? 
the uh, QA has been run. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So yes, for the posterity of recording. Uh, Hello. Thanks for your talk. Um, you've talked about uh, OpenQA on the infrastructure for OpenSUSE and Fedora. Uh, you run it on your server and, and test things. Could I install it on my laptop and use it to test a website I'm building? For example, or is it really sort of server side at the moment? Uh, of course, uh, OpenQA are uh, deployed. Uh, uh, our demos in uh, OpenQA insta instance are uh, deployed in my laptop, uh, and you can deploy OpenQA uh, very uh, easy. Uh, uh, Follow uh, the documentation uh, and test a uh, uh, website or anything else. So, can I install it from a flat pack or uh, like a, an RPM or something, or is it a bit more complex than that? Thank you. Any more questions? Um, in the GitHub, I, s I saw that OpenQA with the uh, Docker Maser. Uh, so do you recommend if we want to start to do some test uh, using the, the Docker to uh, provide a service to the OpenQA? Uh, between the mm, real machine or virtual machine, something like that, yeah. Uh, I remember uh, some guys from Fedora community has uh, generated uh, a Docker image to deploy uh, OpenQA in Docker environment. Uh, am I correct? Any more questions? I have a question quickly. Um, to avoid running JH build inside this, could you hook it up to like a build automation tool like GitLab CI or something else? So build the software first and then trigger a test in OpenQA. Okay, great. The answer seems to be yes. Well, well yes, my, because currently we don't really have thought that much probably you, your comments can be a like idea where is something we should have thoughts about in the future thanks. yeah that makes sense okay um huge thanks to jonathan and ching hai for for speaking uh, it is basically lunchtime remember to buy t-shirts at lunch if you want t-shirts <laughs>